Adio in the Berg, your music central. I am Jackson Roberts, joined alongside some special guests, Isaac Hinson and Lee Beck. Go ahead and introduce your guys or yourselves, and I'll start with Lee, actually. Hi, um, I'm Lee Beck. I'm a copy desk and scene editor for The Observer. Um, that pretty much means that I go through and correct grammar and stuff like that, and I write and edit scene pieces. Cool, and then we'll move on to Isaac real quick. What do you do at The Observer? Uh, I'm the editor-in-chief of The Observer, so I manage every section, all of you guys, yep. make sure everything runs smoothly, write pieces when I have to, make sure everything gets in order. I send the issue to print, pick up the issue, delivery. Lee also helps me with delivery. So, yeah, I'm like a Swiss Army knife. This is the king of the Observer right here, if you will. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Isaac Hinson. Yeah, this is my eighth quarter doing it. Yeah, and that's what I was, was going to be my next question, actually. How long have each of you guys been working at the Observer? This eighth quarter. Yep. Um, it's my third quarter, technically, I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, how much have you guys enjoyed being at the Observer? What are What is it kind of the environment like while working there? We'll start with Isaac. Um, I mean, I've loved it. This has essentially become my college career. Like, this is what I do. I haven't been a normal student in a very long time. Since uh, winter quarter of my freshman year was the last time I didn't take the Observer. And this is fall quarter of my senior year. Long time. So, 2021 <laughs> was the last time I was not doing this. Was that freshman year for you then? Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. You've been a life or career-long <laughs> Observer, man. I know. They need to, like... Hand a picture of me and Lind. We were talking like. about yesterday, uh, Siwu Athletics has their Hall of Fame <laughs> nominations. We could try to put you in for the Observer, at least get an Observer Hall of Fame going. Um, Lee, how much have you enjoyed your time at the Observer? Um, so much. Uh, honestly, not to sound sappy, but like life-changing. Yeah. Like, um, just like such a wonderful environment, and I've grown so much as a writer and as a person. And, you know, I, I love the Observer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of speaking on that, like, it is life-changing, at least for me. Like, I found my drive and my agency doing this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it kind of, like, showed me purpose in a way that I had never had before. I think part of that has to do, it kind of feels bigger than life, like, a little bit larger than what we're, what we're actually doing. Like, yeah. we are just a student newspaper, but, like, when you're in the, like, last night, when you're, like, in the heat of the moment at a design night, yeah. like, really doing, like, journalism... Like, it feels really great. And that's something that I think is very cool for myself now as an editor, being able to go into design nights. I only went into one last year. and But now being able to go in there and watch the magic happen, see all the behind the scenes, see what uh, our great uh, graphic designer Z. Morris is doing um, yeah. as well. And um, so just it's really cool. Like yesterday we were just looking at some of the, just the sports section, uh, how it, what the design layout was going to look like for that. And it was just really fascinating to watch that. Is that something you guys, I know Isaac, you mentioned a little bit yesterday, you're kind of creeping over the shoulder sometimes, but Lee, are you kind of keeping an eye on design a lot too, or are you mainly just looking at copy desk uh, errors? Um, oh, design too. Oh, yeah. I mean, just both for, you know, paper cohesiveness and just for curiosity you know I'm so proud of both of our graphic designers Z Morris and Robin they're fantastic um, and I just love to see the work that they do yeah and it kind of makes the, it doesn't make the paper because the stories are obviously always great but it is really nice having our graphic designers put in such great uh, layouts for the stories and it kind of brings even more life to the paper yeah I mean it used to be a very traditional like black and white an image or two on a page type newspaper yeah. And then since, really since Z came in, we have really played with the idea of like turning it into a new zine, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, like yeah. a blend of a newspaper yeah. and a magazine, like increasing the visuals, kind of like, I don't want to say like we're innovating newspaper yeah. design, but like I don't see, like when I've been, so we were talking off air about we're going to New Orleans at the end of the month for the ACP conference, um, the Associated Collegiate Press, we're going to be there with a bunch of other college journalists, hundreds of them. And every time I've gone, this will be my third time going, third or fourth, I can't remember. Um, none of the other newspapers there look like ours. None of them are as visually striking as ours. None of them clearly put, I mean, not clearly, but like, none of them use design like we use design. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're really kind of on the forefront in that regard, at least with college media. And it's nice having a really unique paper, too. Um, Lee, how, uh, has, were you at the conference last year, or is this going to be your first time going to the conferences? This is my first time going to the conferences, too. Um, I'm so excited yeah. for that. Yeah. Uh, but I know that, like, so many changes happened to the paper after the last conference because mm -hmm. I was just a staff reporter. But, like, 
I'm really excited to see, you know, everything that we learned from this conference. Yeah, what do you, well, Isaac, what was something that besides the design that you left last year, uh, the conference, and came back this year and uh, put it into the paper to change it up a little bit? Oh, that's a good question. Um, we haven't actually implemented it in the paper quite yet, but uh, in bylines, um, a lot of the papers there had reporters' social medias mm. under their oh. bylines, like their Instagram handles and stuff like that. I think that would be really fun to include. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, just a lot of ideas that have been bouncing around in my head that we haven't necessarily implemented because we don't really need to. Yeah. Um, we're to where we are. I mean, we placed third last yeah. year. Like, it's not like we're slouching. No, not at all. We need to drastically alter anything. Um, but I will say what I, my main takeaway every time I come back from one of these trips is that the team itself just feels so much tighter as a unit. Yeah. Um, and when we get back, we're all always tenfold more encouraged to get back to the office and we always come back rejuvenated and ready to go and wanting to put our best foot forward. Yeah, I'm beyond excited. I couldn't even come up with enough words to say how excited I am to go to New Orleans with you guys. And it's going to be a ton of fun and a great experience. Um, I want to know for you guys, when did your writing careers or the, your origin stories of writing start? Lee, do you want to go first? Yeah, um, I've been writing since I was little. Um, it was always kind of like just a hobby for me. I really loved making stories in my head and like being able to put it down on paper and make it cohesive was like really, it was a fun process. Um, and you know, I've just continued writing since then and The Observer's just been a really wonderful outlet for that, you know. Um, news stories is like a different medium than I've, you know, I had never touched that before The Observer, but it's been really, really fun getting to know that form. What is your favorite section to write under at The Observer? <laughs> Um, opinion. Yeah. I'm really opinionated. Yep. Got got a lot of stuff going on in my head. <laughs> Do you have a favorite piece you've written at the Observer? Oh God. Um, oh, uh, there's a couple. I really loved my Punch Gallery piece. There was uh, the design on that one was yeah. really great. Oh too. yeah, Z Z did so wonderful on that. Um, I also really loved my opinion piece about the language and literature building. Mm. That was my first ever um, piece for the Observer, but. I, it meant a lot, you know, I was, I, I miss her. I miss the language and literature building. Yeah, for sure. And then Isaac, when did it all start for you? Um, I used to write comic books when I was really little. I didn't I would, even know I would that. like draw comic books and write them to myself for like me and my dad and my brother. Um, but bef after that, I started writing about the Portland Trailblazers um, for a website which won't be named. Mm. Um, when I was 17 and I did that for about three or four months and then that was right before college and so once that was done I came to college and then I got involved with the Observer my spring of my freshman year and I've been doing this ever since. So what I'm hearing is that you and Z are doing a comic together this week. <laughs> no but I am excited to see <laughs> Z's comic book and we were talking uh, about me and Z have a skit planned for our oh, social media. Okay excited I'm excited about. to see that. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite story that you've written at the Observer in your time there? Um, I wrote this a story about three new football coaches um, back I think it was my sophomore year. I was sports editor at the time um, it was Ronnie Scott, and I can't remember the other two coaches, but I very vividly remember Ronnie's interview. It was, that's my favorite interview I've ever done, and he got super vulnerable, and we, it really felt really real, um, and getting to write his story was really, I really loved that, so Ronnie, if you're listening, shout out. I think my first interview with The Observer was the Tanner Volk story, and I interviewed Ronnie Scott, and he gave me a very, I think, memorable quote that former, uh, Sports editor Carice Jones and I were talking about. I forgot what it was, so I guess it's not as memorable as I thought. But it was something very. Ronnie's the best. Yeah, yeah I Ronnie, love Ronnie. It was just like straight to the point, yeah. and it was pretty funny. Um, do you guys? Uh, we're not quite done yet, but do you guys want to uh, plug up the Observer real quick? Talk about where they can email you guys, give you guys some tips and everything. Yeah. So our issues come out every Thursday. We have been trying to get issue uh, stories up online beforehand. So we have the story about Cheech Moran coming in. That's online right now, um, and we should have some more stories up tonight. Um, but our print issues go out Thursday afternoons, depending. Me and Lee start delivery in the mornings and then typically finish it in the evenings, mm. or the afternoons, rather. Um, and you can find them at newsstands in every single building on campus besides dorms. Um, and, yeah, our website is cuobserver.com, same as our Instagram. 
Um, we're going to be doing a lot more content on Instagram this quarter. Um, Excited and, for it. <laughs> yeah. Also, email us if you have any tips at cwoobserver at gmail.com. We, as much as we want to think that we have our eyes and ears everywhere, we don't. <laughs> And so if something is happening in your department or your club or your sports team, whatever it may be, let us know. And we would love to come check it out. Yeah. And then uh, for uh, students who may not be in the Observer right now, Lee, what would you uh, say to them for why they should join the Observer and how much fun it would be for them? To students who aren't in the Observer who might be interested, I think that it is an incredible opportunity to flex both your writing skills and your people skills. Um, that was... My writing skills I was really confident about, but my people skills needed a little work before the Observer. Um, but it's a really great way to make connections. It's a really great way to make friends even. You know, I feel like everyone in the Observer is like, I don't know, just a, a, a pal. <laughs> yeah. um, well, Isaac, I want to talk to you about, uh, is there anything from this past issue that you want to highlight from uh, issue number one of the quarter? Yeah, sure. I mean, your story I thought was really excellent. That was our front page story blush, last man. week. Uh, the uh, story about the Wildcats winning 36-0 in their home opener. Um, also, I'll plug my stories. Um, since it's kind of October and Halloween season, yep. I wrote about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, that's one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's a great Halloween classic. I rewatch it every year. I rewatched it pretty recently, and it's the 50th anniversary this month. Um, and then I also wrote about the final, or I guess finally, the announcement of the Multicultural Center moving forward. Um, I'm really excited to keep writing about that. Yep. We're going to have a story about that up again, hopefully next week. That was a fun, uh, in uh, Francesco Somaini's investigative journalism class last yeah. year, that was a fun story that me and Isaac Dobmeyer got to work on, but there wasn't as much coming out, so I'm really happy that now there's a lot more. I would be interested to actually go back and look at that and yeah. see if there's anything from that story that I can put in my follow-up next Well, week. yeah, a lot of it was from uh, Layla's story. I'm blanking on mm -hmm. her last name, but um, there was uh, a lot that we also pulled up from that story, and so those stories were really kind of what started our piece. So I think if you look back at ours and that one, it should make for even an even greater piece. Um, and then uh, what are all the sections in the Observer? And could you give a brief description of each one for people who may not know? Yeah, sure. So we have four sections, pretty much. We have news, which is more about campus politics, um, anything that you might need to know about what's going on. So like the news about the Multicultural Center, that would be news. Or we're running a story this week about President Wolpart's State of the University address. That would be news. Um, we have scene, which is kind of arts and entertainment, so music, plays, um, art around campus, or anything that would be news, but it's a little more fun. Like Lee wrote a story this week about the passing of Buddy the Parrot. Um, shout out, Buddy. R.I.P. R.I.P. Um, and then sports, which is the section that you edit, and I should mention Lee at its scene. Um, sports, what you edit is as simple as it sounds. Yep. It's sports section. We do player profiles, uh, scores, game recaps, anything and everything. And then our opinion section is where we get to kind of really flex our muscles sometimes about what, what we want to write about more than the bandwidth we're given. Like, I want to write about movies. Yep. And so I have an Oscars column there. Um, yeah. We have the soundbite short section. Yeah, Brandon has his soundbite column, which is about music. Uh, we get a lot of really cool stuff in the opinion section. Yeah. Um, would, what would you tell uh, your little self? Would, did you think that you were going to be making it to working for a college newspaper, or was that something that was kind of not in the realm of possibilities in your mind, Lee? Um, it honestly was n not a realm of possibility at all for me. I was never, like, I always, like, pictured myself as, like, I'm going to write books. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm a writer. But then I came to Central, and I tacked on a journalism minor because I wanted something, and then I started taking journalism classes, and I really fell in love with the way that we tell stories. You know, it's, it's not as influenced by emotion, but it is very much, like, it's objective in the sense that the reader can draw their own conclusions, and I really loved figuring out that puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're happy to have all, are you at the Observer for my time, here you've been a great copy desk lead ah. and honestly i know you mentioned francesco's watched you grow grow a little bit too but 
feels like we've had every single class with each other. The copy desk, COM226, Observer, and so... I wish I had taken that copy desk class. That sounded really fun. It was fun. fun. It was yeah. interesting. I felt very slow at first. Um, Lee was definitely carrying the class. <laughs> um, and I was sitting in the back not talking much. But That, that 226 class was legendary. Oh my that, goodness. That, I loved that class. Yeah. I, I don't think there, I'll have a more memorable class here at Central <laughs> than that class, probably. And, I mean, that was before I even worked here. It was, I literally walked into that day. It was first day of classes. I'm like, I need to be working at 88.1. I spent my first two years not doing that. Mm -hmm. And so I saw uh, Ryan Gildersleeve and Cash Brown sitting there with 88.1 shirts on. And you were at the table, too. And I was like, those are the people I have to. And it led <laughs> to so many great opportunities for me. So I'm happy that that class uh, was something that we all got to share with each other. Yeah, what about you? How What's your experience with the OB been like? Oh my gosh, so much fun. I feel so bougie, if you will. Like some of the <laughs> some of the uh, things I get to do for the sports section is really cool because even just this last week for the front page story, uh, I was on the field like 45 minutes before the game interviewing uh, a couple coaches and just walking around and it just felt like, it felt really surreal because, I mean, while uh, Tomlinson Stadium isn't maybe like an NFL stadium or anything. It still felt really cool to be down on the field and just kind of on the level that all the players were at and uh, to be able to talk to uh, some of the fans at the tailgate and everything was super cool to see all the emotions, uh, how excited they were for the first uh, home game in like eight or nine games. So it was really cool. And then also just being able to go kind of um, talk to the players, talk about their mindsets and then um, just interviewing the players is really cool. I've been a sports fan since I was a little kid, and so I kind of get to fulfill my my dream of uh, interviewing sports people and just talking about it. So yeah, uh, back when I started and I was sports editor for a long time, I, as much as I love being EIC, uh, nothing beats being sports Dude, editor. Is, I think it's the best job. I've it's some of the most fun. It's stuff. so fun. It's it, the best. I. I I don't feel like I do too much. <laughs> I feel like that I am here working on sports, and it's just something that I casually do in my meantime. So, Yeah, we were talking uh, the other night about my old motto when I was sports yep. editor which for design nights. I don't want to live by it. But. Yeah, it's not something to live by, but it was uh, last to show up, first to leave, just based on like the workload. <laughs> Killer, that's so bad. Yeah, not uh, completely lying though. But. Uh, yeah, I know exactly. There's a hint of truth to it. Shout out to my old co-sports editor Jacqueline Hitchson and my old EIC Catherine Camrata. I love you guys, but yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys showing up. Um, we'll probably be doing this weekly. While we, we're probably going to switch out more uh, people from the Observer throughout the each week, but I'm happy to have you guys on here soon. And I appreciate you guys uh, showing up. Definitely. Yeah, we should have a Z on next oh, week. Oh, definitely. I agree. Fun. That'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, we'll get you guys a couple ads your way, as well as some Claro. Hey, Dan Wendelberg, your Music Central. Welcome back into the second half of the Student Media Podcast. Podcast. Wow. Got two new guests with me. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Gunnar Stuns. I'm the editor-in-chief at Pulse Magazine for this quarter. I'm Keaton Wires, and I'm one of the photographers at Pulse Magazine for this quarter. Cool. I appreciate you guys both coming on for the first episode of the Student Media Podcast, where this will be two or happening at 3 o'clock on Tuesdays every single week. I want to start out with just talking about a little bit what you do as editor-in-chief at the paper. Of course. So Pulse Magazine is Central's student-led, student-run lifestyle magazine. Um, we mostly publish stories relating to campus and campus life. Um, but generally just stories that are applicable to students here on Central Campus and what might be of interest to them. Um, as the editor-in-chief, I kind of run the place, I guess, um, right in there. theory. <laughs> um, so I, I help assign stories, I tell the writers what to do, I help instruct the class and um, teach some of the AP style guidelines and how to do magazine writing, I suppose. Um, it's my fifth quarter at Pulse. I've been the editor-in-chief for just one quarter, um, but I've been working with the magazine for a while now, and it is genuinely one of my favorite things I've done at college. Keaton, go ahead and explain what you do at, the, or at Pulse. Well, I'm a newbie. I had a little bit of experience last quarter helping out and shadowing the class a little bit, but now this is my first time actually getting involved, and so I'm just trying to help out wherever I can. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be taking photos, and I get to help work with the designers and make sure their like ideas come to life through the pictures. So I also like the polls. They uh, encourage a lot of 
your own creative expression. They want you to come with your own style, which is great. And so I'm just happy and can't complain about anything so far. I'm excited to keep going. What can you guys say about the designs that go into Pulse? They're always so just mesmerizing to look at the colors, the graphics and everything. What can you say about the graphic designers? The graphic designers are awesome, dude. Um, we have in the past won awards for graphic design. Um, everyone does such a fantastic job. Um, one of my favorite things about Pulse is that we can kind of encourage creativity more than you can at um, other publications. And I think our designers really do a great job expressing themselves and expressing the stories through their own creative art pieces. Um, we love to do illustrations at Pulse. That's one of the best ways that um, our designers can express the stories um, through their own creative medium. And I am very, very proud of our designers. Do you have a favorite design that you have ever seen at Pulse? I'm biased. Um, <laughs> in the winter edition from last year, um, there was this story called Ellen's Birds. And our designer for that story did like these photorealistic illustrations of these birds that we found. And I'm biased because <laughs> we took that one to La Jolla in the spring for the SPJ conference, and we actually won an award for it. So I, I am very, very proud of that one. Can you talk to us a little bit about that trip down there as well? Yeah, that trip was amazing. Um, one of my favorite parts about it is that I feel like as the Pulse editing staff and as the Observer editing staff, we actually got to know each other very well. And I feel like we bonded a lot. And I think that sense of uh, companionship between our two publications has been a really good strength for both of us moving forward. Um, also, while we had the opportunity to go to that conference, we met a lot of other student journalists from around the country. And we just kind of got to talk shop and explore our ideas and what we thought was special about being, you know, student journalists and kind of the importance behind it. And I personally felt very inspired uh, by a lot of the conferences and um, professional talks that we got while we were down there. Um, it was an amazing experience. Well, that's awesome. I know I'm looking forward to the New Orleans trip for the Observer yeah. uh, at the end of this month. So I'm hoping that I get to experience a little bit of what you got to experience. Yeah, uh, I hope where was so. it? Was it New York for you, or was it? It was San Diego. San Diego. Okay, got you. It was pretty close to San Diego. Yeah, it's, it's like New York. No, yeah. <laughs> I mean it's always good weather there. Yeah. I can't complain. <laughs> um, Keaton, as a photographer, I know this, you said this like technically your second quarter or first quarter. Yeah, I just transferred it. last quarter. Yeah. So how? Excited are you to start doing some photography work for the or for Pulse magazine? Oh, so excited. I mean, any chance I can get my hands on a camera and go out and take pictures, more experience, I'm always happy. But it's a new medium for me. I've never worked in this kind of setting, so I'm really excited about learning the tips and tricks to taking photos for magazine specific. Like I've already heard from designers, they have to overlay over the pages, so I need to leave extra room around the edges. Just little things like that are great to learn for me and put in my tool bag. What is your origin story of photography? Where did it all start for you? Uh, in high school, I saved up a ton of money, as much as I had at the time, and I bought my camera. And then my first video I took was going to our rivals, like football game in high school and I just made like a video of me and my friends going tailgating and then the game and kind of that and so that was my first video I made probably back in like 2013 Wow! and just haven't put it down since after that I went to a trip to China because we had an exchange student so we got to go visit and I was like 14 in China taking pictures on my camera I got like three months ago and then I just couldn't put it down I got addicted and Never look back. Is this something you're doing everywhere? You bring your camera with you, you're taking photos? Yeah, uh, some parts when I was living in Chicago, you know, leave it at home, it's for the best. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for the most part, I'm always geared up. Cool. And then, Gunner, when did you start writing? What is your origin story for that as well? Or what intrigued you about it? Well, I'll be honest with you. I started writing when I was like 11, 12, uh, because I couldn't draw. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, I didn't have the patience to become an artist, so I started writing instead. And this whole time, I thought I was going to be like a novelist. Um, I wanted to write books. I would really like to write comics. And I would like to do both of those things still. I think that would be my dream job is writing comics. But um, I got into journalism because I thought it would be a professional way to write and make some money doing it. <laughs> um, but the more I kept doing it, 
the more important it felt to me. Like, as a journalist and as a reporter, I was able to give information to people that could potentially change their lives. And for me, it feels like a way to give back to the community that has given me so much. So that's why it's important to me. And that's why I feel like it's kind of my role in the world to do that, I suppose. One of my favorite things just about The Observer, or, well, the least favorite things about The Observer, favorite thing about The Pulse is the freedom you have to write about whatever you want. Can you talk to me a little bit about all of the different sections that we have in Pulse magazine? Yeah, so in Pulse we have a, it, it is pretty different from The Observer. I've worked at both now. Um, we have a, a wide range of stories because we're only putting out one issue per quarter. So we've got to fit a lot of different types of stories into a single edition of the magazine. Um, so we have campus life ones. Um, that a lot of our stories are about the campus itself or about things that the studi students can experience on campus. Um, but we also have different sections like Our Town. Um, that talks about some stuff that's going on in Ellensburg. Um, one of my favorite stories that I've ever done for Pulse was called Ellen's Lore. And that was like a historical piece I just did about a bunch of stuff you can find in Ellensburg. Um, but we've got a food and drink section for exactly what it sounds like. Um, we've got um, our after dark section, which covers some, I suppose you could say, more risque topics. Um, what else? I'm putting you on life the spot hacks. here. You've got to remember all of them. I'm trying, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to remember all of them. We've got life hacks. Life yeah. hacks, that's true. That's more of a... Again, that's exactly what it sounds like, but that's where you'll find your tips and tricks, your how to make meals cheap, how to find, I don't know, furniture in, yeah. this, <laughs> in this town where you need to decorate your dorm room and everything is so expensive. Sports. Um, sports, obviously, we have a sports section. Um, sports is actually something I'm trying to find more of because usually that's the observer's thing. Um, and we haven't had many sports stories in the last few editions. Um, we could probably stand to do some more. I think a lot of the old sports story, the most recent sports stories you guys have done, though, have been very interesting. Oh, yeah. And really great just topics to cover. And so, I don't know, I really love what you guys have done in the sports in the past. And so, yeah, I think definitely in the future, some future sports stuff would be fun to do. And just hope, hopefully matching some of those stories because... I mean, obviously, almost every page, the design, the stories are all great, and they just mesh so well together. And I think it's just very fun for the students on campus to uh, have this magazine. And where could they find it? It is at pretty much every newsstand in every building around campus. And like you were saying, one of the things that's so great about Pulse is the fact that we have the writers pitch their stories every week. And it's a little bit different because we're not looking for immediate newsworthy stories. Um, we're looking for stories that'll have a shelf life of years mm. that you can look back on in two, three years from now and still find something to get out of them. And because our writers pitch these stories and their students themselves, it really gives us a sense for what students want to be reading. So I think that's one of our biggest strengths. What can you say about the Observer, Keaton, so far in your time there? About Pulse. Oh, my goodness. See, this, <laughs> this is week one. This will be improved. Keaton, oh, this go ahead. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question? I was uh, what could you say about your time so far at Pulse magazine? Uh, magazine, the people there, the work you're doing. How much is it? Uh, how cool is it really? Oh, it's just nothing but wonderful remarks from the staff to the teachers to all my classmates working with me. Like... It's been great, and I'm new here, so like getting to meet more people interested in similar things is always great as well. Um, also, I'm excited for a couple of the just like straight up photo shoots. Like that's really fun for me. Um, please contact us if you're interested in modeling. That would be awesome. We are looking for some. Where yes, could they con? Are. Yep. Where could they contact you? Um, they can contact our social media at Siwu Pulse Magazine. Or you can shoot an email to me at gunner.stuns at siwu.edu. Cool. Yeah. Um, also, my first quarter at Pulse, if it's not obvious by me calling it Observers too many times. Um, I'm very excited for it, too. The, uh, obviously, without spoiling anything, I'm excited for the upcoming stories that we have this quarter. Sitting down throughout uh, all the pitches and everything, just... Feels like we have a really great slate, and I'm just really excited for the students to be, to be able to read this next issue. Um, is there anything else uh, you guys want to uh, bring up before uh, we close out the show? 
Um, nothing much beyond the fact that you should read Pulse. Oh, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. You can find our website at siwoopulsemagazine.com. And like I said, follow our social media. It is Siwoo Pulse Magazine on pretty much everything. Um, we've got some exciting things coming up on social media, and I think we've got a great edition of the magazine that we're cooking. Cool. All right. Well, I appreciate both you guys showing up here for the first episode of the Student Media Podcast, which will be uh, on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. every week. So hopefully we'll be seeing you guys here throughout the quarter. Uh, we'll bring on more students as well from Pulse, but I definitely want to see you guys back here. Yeah, whenever Absolutely. you want. Anytime Thank you. you have me back. Cool. All right. Time to pay the bills. Got a few ads for you guys and then some music. I will see you guys on Thursday for the Wildcast.